on the road to recovery, Castle Rock, Colorado. Hi, from Millville, New Jersey. I'm on the road to recovery. We're on the road to recovery in Morgantown, West Virginia, at Mountaineer Field. And live in Scranton, Pennsylvania, I'm on the road to recovery. Here I am on the road to recovery from Berlin, Maryland. Hey, from Caseville, Michigan, I'm on the road to recovery. I'm on the road to recovery at Ann Arbor, University of Michigan. Here we are on the road to recovery in beautiful Los Angeles, California, and I'm out here with my good friend Peter Feinstone of Low Blow Productions to bring you the story of John Whitaker, a gifted actor, a lifetime achievement in television and film, a documentary filmmaker, and a very good friend. On the road to recovery from Los Angeles, um, this is John Whitaker. My story? I grew up a good Mormon boy. I was one of those kids that liked to run around and, and um, swirl myself around and get all off keister. I loved that. I loved to get all weirded out. My first alcohol drink was in high school. And fast forward, um, I went on a mission for the Mormon church to Portugal. I came home from my mission, got married to a beautiful model. And four years into the marriage, she told me that she didn't love me and that she wanted to uh, marry the man who gave me my bachelor party. Bitch. The God that I supported, that I knew, that I loved, I said, you know what? God doesn't exist if he would do this. And so, I went to the dark side, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Started just going to bars and somebody, well, a young lady invited me back to her place to smoke some marijuana and it sounds good. She asked me if I wanted to go to a party that next Friday and I said, sure, why not? Um, she met me or I picked her up, and she said, oh, do you have 40 bucks? I said, what? We get to the party, there's this tall black transvestite who opens the door, welcome! And so the girl hands over the 40 bucks. There's a big table, glass, all filled with lines. And I said, oh, I don't do Coke. And the, young, the, the hostess said, oh, baby, this ain't no Coke. This is a designer drug, designed for you, baby. And so my girlfriend went, <laughs> took the coke, or the, the meth, and then I went, took it, and oh, I couldn't see for a little bit. After taking that big line uh, of methamphetamine, I said, wow, oh. This little Mormon boy, he just did speed. Can I have some more? You know where I was that next Friday? Knock, 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 knock. Welcome. <laughs> so he's right back there. Well, that started me on methamphetamines. I did crack, I did coke, and I love to take that first hit. Booyah! The booyahs turned into poo uh, That's when you can't make it to the toilet after taking a big hit. And I realized that there might be a problem. My family, a little while later, had an intervention. I had three nephews, two, three, and four, and they were very important to me. And I said, I need them in my life. My family said, you cannot see them ever again until you're clean and sober. So I went into treatment. And it was there 
that I found people like myself. People who knew what a booyah was. <laughs> people who had um, the crazy stuff like me running out in the middle of the street butt naked. And they laughed with me, not at me. And they were there when I had deaths in the family. And I didn't have to drink with you. You know, I decided um, that I didn't want the God that I grew up with. But my sponsor, who is a guy, he said, John, you don't have to have any God except the God you understand. It worked. Ask him in the morning to give me strength to get through the day without drinking or using. And at night, trying to remember if I needed to do anything to repair any damage that I'd done the day before. And it started working. I lost the craving to drink and use, and I had support. And I started to teach other people. I became a sponsor. Recovery and treatment and helping people, I've learned that there's so much more I can receive when I give of my time and talents and I'm not getting paid for it. I used to make a whole lot of money. And now I'm not getting paid for it? <laughs> well, as my very wealthy uncle said, money can't buy happiness, but it sure helps you decide the particular type of misery you want to live in. There's a phrase in, in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous that says, rarely have we found a person to fail who has thoroughly followed our path. With knowledge and a whole lot of work, you can stay clean and sober. And um, that's my story. John, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and spending time with me. I, I'm so grateful for your friendship and the inspiration that you give me as I'm now able to share that hope and inspiration with other people. From beautiful, sunny Los Angeles, California, I'm Michael DeLeon. We will see you on the next episode of On the Road to Recovery. To recovery.